Now, in this video, we will learn about asynchronous programming in Dart, which is future async and await. So, now, so far we have been doing synchronous programming, which is when tasks are executed in order specific. Let's say we are having this three tasks. As you can see, we are having void mean, where we are having our perform task function and in this perform task function we are having three functions named task 1, task 2 and task 3. And we have passed this three function in our perform task function. So now when will this function will be executed, this will be our output. As you can see, the, out, the order in which the task have been written in our perform task function in the same order their output will be printed as well. So first task 1 is called. So that's why we are getting task 1 complete. Then task 2 complete and task 3 complete. So this is our synchronous programming. But let's say that step 2 takes a long time. You don't want to wait all the day for it to finish. Now you also want to do other things in the meantime. So, this is when asynchronous programming comes in. Now, asynchronous programming is all about multitasking. So, instead of waiting for step 2 to complete, we can start running step 2, then execute step 3. And then at some point later, when step 2 completes, we will do something with its output like printed out. So, this is the output that it will be printed. First task 1 is complete. Then when the task 2 is not completed and it is still running, so then we will execute step 3. And as execute and as step 3 has been completed, so it will be printed first. And after that, when the step 2 will be completed, it output will be shown as well. Now we will learn about adding delay with sleep method or future dot delayed method. Well, it is a very handy function if you want to add some delay in your execution of your code is the slave function. So here we will use our slave function. Let me tell you that slave function is used for synchronous programming generally. So here as you can see we are having a void task function where we are having duration and we have given the duration of 3 seconds and then we have called our slave function and we have passed our duration parameter inside it and here we are printing a string name task2 and we are also returning a result task2 data. So now when you will run the code we will get task1 complete and when task2 will be called then it will wait for 3 seconds because we have given the slave function. So this function will be slave for 3 seconds and after that task2 complete will be shown and after that task3 will be called. So now we can do the same with an asynchronous method which is future.delayed method. So here as you can see we have used future.delayed method instead of slip method. And inside this method arguments we have passed our duration which is for 3 seconds. And, in, and the second parameter is a function which is having a string and we will be printing task to complete. Now, when we will run this code, we will get task 1 complete, then we will get task 3 complete and after that we will get task 2 complete because future.delayed is an asynchronous function. So the code will go on and execute task 3 and when task 2 completes, it after that it will print out its result. Now we will learn about the async and await keyword. Now what if the code for task 3 is dependent on the output of task 2. So here as you can see that we have used future delete which is an asynchronous function. So the execution will continue and the task 2 function will return a null value for task 2 result because the result inside the task 2 function hasn't been set to task 2 data yet. Then the null value will be passed to the task 3 which will be which will print task 3 complete with null and when task 2 finally completes it will print task 2 complete let me show you what will be the output 
So here as you are seeing that first we are getting task 1 complete then we are getting task 3 complete with null and after the pause of 3 seconds we are getting task 2 complete. So this is not good because we actually need the result of task 2 function to be used in our task 3 function. So for that we will be using the async and await keywords. So here we need to mark the method with async keyword in order to use the await keyword inside. So by putting the await keyword before the method we need to tell the code to wait for the method to finish before moving on. So this time our output will be task 1 complete then we will pause for 3 seconds and after that we will be printing task 2 complete and this time our task 3 complete with task 2 data because we have waited for task 2 method to get completely executed and to return its data inside task 3 as its input. Now it is also worth noting that our task 2 will be an instance of future string until it is completed. So when it is completed it will materialize into a string and assign to the take 2 result. So in our next video we will learn about the future feature of Dart.